Welcome to the Tesla Economist. Please hit the thumbs up and remember to subscribe. You can also follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon. A lot of people say that Tesla's real competitive advantage is their pace of innovation, which I'm inclined to agree with. Therefore, if Tesla does have any competition, it would have to be a company that can also innovate or out-innovate Tesla. Now this video is a further part of our series on China and whether they pose a threat to Tesla and just how big they might become in the EV industry and auto industry as a whole. For example, the way I see Tesla is they will make a lot of noise about something, say for example, nickel supplies, and imply that it's all about nickel for batteries. Then the competition start investing in nickel battery factories and supply chains. Only then Elon will announce something like, nickel is not the way forward, it is in fact iron batteries that we need. And anyone else not headed in that direction is at a $5,000 cost disadvantage per vehicle. This might also be part of Tesla's game theory. Anyway, the point is, if you want to really compete with Tesla, then you have to out-innovate Tesla. Not an easy feat, especially given Tesla has all the best minds in the relevant industries already working for them. So what chance do the Chinese have? For example, when Tesla out-innovate on manufacturing using processes like die-cast molds with gigapresses, Tesla has orders for the gigapresses backed up for something like a year. So that's gonna be hard for any manufacturer to compete in. Also, each one makes about 200,000 or so casts a year. So they'd need to be selling that many EVs really to justify the overheads. Instead, Neo tried to out-innovate Tesla, or at least perhaps tried to reposition themselves in the market with a unique feature, using a battery swap technology. So you swap your old battery with a fully charged one, rather than having to wait for the battery to charge. But the process isn't exactly fast, and if there's a queue, then it will take longer than recharging anyway. Not to mention charging speeds are improving continually anyway. Oh, also this was actually Tesla's idea first, and Neo just copied it. Tesla realized that this was not the future and quickly ditched it. It does also now hinder Neo in the design of their cars, as there is one more limiting constraint, designing the batteries around replacement, which means they cannot use structural battery packs. What was it Elon said at Battery Day about structural battery packs? Long term, any cars that do not take this architecture will not be competitive. I guess this is what happens when other OEMs try to out-innovate Tesla. They just take a step in the wrong direction, potentially putting them out of business over time. So every OEM is stuck following Tesla's roadmap, but especially China. As a country, China suppresses individualism, creativity, and innovation. It promotes collectivism and cohesiveness. As a result, the Chinese know how to replicate, but not innovate. Therefore, they will always be lacking and falling behind Tesla. They will never be able to keep up. The years that Tesla will do in R&D for the perfect manufactured cars can't be replicated in a few months, particularly when entire factories are built around this innovation. For example, we're about to discover new manufacturing techniques from Tesla's new factories. Imagine if the Chinese see them and want to copy them. Well, just think how long it would take for them to build and design a new car to work around them, then build the factories to build the cars in this way, then to try and produce enough of these cars to reach economies of scale, and then to do it in a way that actually generates a profit. And then to achieve that at a lower price point than Tesla. Even if they achieved that, it would take a few years, by which time Tesla has already re-innovated. And bear that in mind that every equal Chinese car has to be cheaper than a Tesla, or else most consumers will just opt for a Tesla. Tesla's brand alone carries more value than any Chinese EV. Of course, because the Chinese have much lower profit margins as a result, they simply can't invest in growth as significantly as Tesla. So it will be difficult for them to achieve any mass scale production due to such large significant capital investments, which is hard to raise if you're not making any profits. The Chinese are not innovators, they're replicators, but eventually some things just become too hard to keep up with. For example, how on earth are they gonna beat Dojo or account for the billions of miles of data Tesla have for FSD? They can only go for level four autonomy, not level five. It will always be slower, more dangerous, not so many vehicles available, not as comfortable, and not as much entertainment, and will likely cost more than using a Tesla Robotaxi. Despite what people say, Tesla will have a level five autonomy monopoly. And if anyone hits level five, then that's the only level that matters. Tesla will continue to out-innovate China. Sure, some of these companies now are doing an amazing job releasing so many new models on a regular basis. A little too quick if you ask me. Surely a lot of it has to be rushed, at least compared with how much time and care Tesla take when releasing a new model. But either way, each new Chinese version is an improvement on the last, and they're slowly evolving their products. For example, the progress BYD have made on their cars is a huge jump, but eventually there will come a time when these adaptable Chinese manufacturers 
will eventually hit diseconomies of scale, and it will take a lot longer to keep up with Tesla. That's the thing about being a small business. You can adapt much faster, but as you grow, you lose this pace of adaption, which is what diseconomies of scale is about, and is partly why we see the legacy autos struggle so much. There's so many chains of command to go through, with lots of people's opinions and agendas, and it's hard to know who is credible. Whereas Tesla, despite being the most valuable auto company in the world, or company that happens to sell autos, before I get all the comments about how Tesla is not a car company. Anyway, despite Tesla's valuation, it's actually a very small company when compared to GM, in just sheer size. Therefore, Tesla actually hasn't reached this economies of scale to much of a degree yet either, and they're still able to quickly adapt when necessary. So if the Chinese companies do start to grow in size, then don't expect them to keep up to date with Tesla so much. Not that they are in any way now, but even worse as time goes on, and especially don't expect them to out-innovate Tesla. And most important innovations I see are going to be FSD, battery technology and manufacturing processes. FSD? Well, Tesla has that hands down. Don't listen to other people who tell you otherwise. Think for yourself and do your own research. And it sounds like after Waymo is finally getting there, no one even wants to use it after all that. FSD Beta 10 looks absolutely incredible. So just imagine what happens when Dojo goes all out. No one is out innovating Tesla on FSD. Then batteries. Well, Tesla's 4680 batteries are the higher density nickel batteries, and even BYD's iron-based lower density batteries are around 50% more per kilowatt hour. If Tesla produce their own iron-based batteries, then they will likely be at half the price of BYD's. Again, no one close to Tesla's battery innovation. And when we have manufacturing, no one else is using gigapresses, saving perhaps as many as 600 robots when you use front and rear die casts. And of course, the structural battery pack too, meaning that Tesla can scale up production much faster and cheaper than anyone else. Oh wait, also Tesla just built the two largest EV manufacturing plants on the entire planet and must have production capabilities of around 20 times more than the next competitor. This is a really long lead, but Tesla are going to be the ones out innovating everyone from here too. Tesla can justify the largest investments into R&D to further improve everything they have today. And it won't be long until the Model 2 factory is announced which could actually double capacity again. Remember, we're dealing with exponentials. Well, with exponentials, there comes a certain point when the numbers get crazy. We're not far off that now. China is not going to out-innovate Tesla. In fact, Tesla might out-innovate all of China with their robots and may end up replacing all of China's cheap labor for manufacturing. This is what creative destruction does. In fact, my own personal belief is that China will not become the superpower everyone claims due to this fundamental holding back of individualism. All they do is copy, Still copyrights and patents too. Since China joined the WTO, then I believe it's something like 80% of all counterfeit goods come from China. It's ingrained in their culture. It's how they do business. They just think to make it, you copy what others do and sell it cheaper. And as I keep saying, none of the other manufacturers seem to be able to break past 10,000 units a month. No other manufacturer can achieve that. And the Wuling doesn't count, let alone doing it out of profit. As Elon continually says, volume production is hard, and doing it with a positive cash flow is excruciating. And that's using all the best engineers in the world for the job who likely have much higher job satisfaction and are part of a much bigger mission. So what chance do the others have? Therefore, I think Tesla is safe on their innovation barrier and the Chinese will not be able to copy Tesla's innovation at a fast enough pace. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and talk to me on Patreon.